try to keep it as straight as you can, which sometimes it's challenging. And now we have it somewhat pretty much bent. And of course you just take this little piece here and fold it up. Hmm. That part's the easy part. Yeah, that part's the easier part. The, the hard part's actually trying to get it uh, set correctly to go in. So I'm going to do the same thing here that I did with the solder. It's a whole lot of the tweezers because it's a little too small for my fingers to be. Uh, yeah. Long pieces aren't usually a big deal. It's those little tiny skinny pieces. So like I said, I put a little extra flux on the, the tip of this brush here. Run it in there so it'll suck down underneath. So will the flux come up a uh, paintbrush too? Or? No. No? Yeah, basically I have multiple paintbrushes for multiple different reasons. So we'll slide it on the end of the tip. Touch the part and then run the iron down the part and the solder will go with it. So now I have this part. It's probably a little warm right now, but there's that part. Side question. What do you do to clean up your brush? I usually don't worry about it with a flex. I use the same brush all the time. It doesn't? It doesn't do, no. If you want to clean it, uh, rubbing alcohol works fine. Windex, you know, so it works fine to, to, to clean it out with. And that's what I've done in the past sometimes. Because there's been a few times that I've dumped that over on some kind of a chemical or whatever, and it likes to eat, eat whatever else. You just take it, wipe it down, and throw a little Windex on it. And it's or rubbing alcohol or something like that works. Let's see. Now here's a nice long one. Let's see if we can get that one. So I'm noticing you're doing all this work before you prime the model. Yes. So I assume that the brass will take any primer. Yeah, it won't. You don't have any problem with the primers at all. I know what I with the last one of these I built. I forgot that I was going to actually try to assemble, reassemble it, get it back together so everybody can see what the finished subject actually looks like. Mm -hmm. I completely spaced it. I was worrying about other things, and then this morning I'm going, oh no, I was supposed to do that wasn't I? I don't remember what I was doing this week. So we're going to do the same thing. Excuse me. I need to have some lunch yet. That's what I mean. Hey, Phil. You're having a photo edge class you want to watch. It's nice, but I don't have the time. <laughs> oh, okay. We do, we do put it on Facebook, though. Yep, I'll check. We in photo edge don't get along, so... <laughs> <laughs> I didn't either until somebody taught me, so cool. it's just the tools. It's yeah. really the tools. That's what I think. I picked up a few, so we'll see how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're channel, of course. Okay, so now I get another one. I'm going to do a class on panel lines. How to actually put your own panel lines in the model. I have a with a scriber, all the little tools. Um, uh, Scott has requested me to do a filling class. So sure. filling stuff like that. I'm going to do that too. When um, is this? Probably sometime in September. Because next month it's all filled up with a, a RC airplane. We'll use the, the whole class for that. Or the whole month for that. 
I was going to start the RC airplane class last week, next week, but the gentleman decided he wanted to, wanted to go ahead and do the, the his trees that week. So okay, that's not a problem. <laughs> so gives me a break, gives me a week, you know, a week to kind of do some other stuff. Because then I have the Gundam class every first of every month. Yeah. Which that one's always fun. It's a lot that of fun. is fun. It's kind of you, know, you can do anything you really want. You know, you don't have to make it perfect. It's just it's satisfying. That's what it is. Yeah. I think when I do my next one, I'm going to find the, the square brass rod. So I don't have to bend this. Not a bad idea. <laughs> just cut them, the, cut, them the, cut them to the length that I need and just solder yeah. them all together. But, you know, it is also also, also fun to try to, to have the challenge of doing the more complex stuff. So I figured with the amount of models kits that I've got, and the level of the detail that I like to put into some of them. I'd have to be a thousand years old by the time I got done. You might make it. Now, it does take a lot of practice to actually solder. A lot of practice. Um, I've actually done some plumbing soldering too, and that is not an easy task. You got to get that copper just right, and you got to have just the right amount of flux and all that other stuff on it, and sanded and all that other to get it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and it leaks. So oh, there's that one. It looks like my solder decided to solder the the piece on it. So there's those two pieces. Um, let's see what else we want to do here. Do something a little bit more fun here because those little that's more the tedious style of the work here. Do something a little try to find something that's a little bit fun. I don't have anything round right now to show you how this piece works. I was actually gonna ask you about that. Yeah. I don't have anything. I don't know if there's. I don't think there's any in this set. I don't think there's anything that, that requires it. I know the other set that I've got does. When you form up a tube, on this Daniel, I, I'm listening to you. Do you overlap the edge? They actually, from what I understand, those sizes put the edges right together. Together, and then you solder them. Yeah, and then you, you can solder, solder them on right. there on yeah. the form. Yeah, right. Well, I don't know if I'd want to solder it right on there, but. Oh yeah, I am. Okay. You just have to hold the have... shape. Getting the joint true is tough. Because on the other one that I have, it's got little rocket pods that sit on the other gun. Mm -hmm. Those require a tube type thing to, to bend them. Mm -hmm. And that's what those are good for. Do you carry that, that uh, tube form? Oh, that's what this is. Yeah, no, it's yeah. Very, very I haven't had him in a while. That's a Mission Models one, is what that is. It's one of his older ones. I heard he's be he's going to be re, be re, re releasing it. So, this one looks like it has a lot of stuff that goes on it. This guy right here. This right here is actually this. That's what it is. When once this is all finished. The the, uh, the photo wedge just it's, it enhances it this thing. It's just wow, yeah. you know, it's cool because it takes some of the the, the the details that are in the kit and actually turns it three dimensional. So it makes mm -hmm. it more scale effect mm -hmm. too. Now I remember what I wanted to do. Let's see where you go. This guy. The 
sides of the outside. I was thinking about that. Because what this is is the belts and straps, and here's the belts for all the equipment that goes around the top and stuff like that. Uh, the, the better thing to use this set of the photo etch is they have a, thing, uh, uh, a material they call uh, lead foil. It makes the best buckles, belts, yeah. or not the buckles, but the belts. The belts, for... the belts, seat cushion belts, you know, in tarps. It makes great tarps, you know, stuff like it's Yeah, it's awesome stuff. Where do you get that? Um, I can order it. I have one in here. It's a little bit thicker. And the other place you can get is your dentist. You can ask for the lead foil. <laughs> it's a lot thinner than this stuff is. <laughs> what does he use that for? When you do x-rays, it, yeah. so you only have your... your uh... So this is the lead foil. It's just, it's real flexible. Oh, sure. How's that whole paint? Very well, actually. So even if you're, you're flexing it, it still holds the paint? Yeah, and what I use this for is when I make a master. I use this to make the seat, the, the seat belts. Mm -hmm. And then I have the photo wet buckles. And I'll weave it through the buckles oh, and cool. put it on there and then and the great thing with the lead foil is when you put it on there it'll actually sit on there and you can actually make the seat belt buckle look like it's yeah. naturally sitting there yeah. you know like it just sits there like it's supposed to you know better than a decal yeah and a piece of tape mm -hmm. i hate that too the the the, the, the ipms nationals can say yes but it, it, it you can't do this i'm going but you have to use seat uh masking tape for seat belts I don't think so. So that guy like that. Let me see. There's no instructions for this one. Let me see what to say. Okay. Oh, this one actually uses a part of the kit. The other one didn't. The other one of these I didn't it didn't use the part of the kit. It actually had a piece of brass that bent underneath it. Yes. Where's this how's things going? <laughs> why can't you just come say hi, Dan? Uh, well, well Scott, usually you're not here, so that's why I'm going you okay, Scott? <laughs> By the way. We mailed him. They're gonna do anything about it, or just tell them you, you just don't come back. We did. We didn't. We just found out that we nailed him because he did go in the bathroom a minute ago. And I saw him walk around, kind of funny earlier in that way. Yeah. Nice shirt, Scott. Did you play the beta? Just think. We'll talk after. Class. Yeah, we'll talk after class. <laughs> Can't get salty when people are in there. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the teacher does get upset when the, the, the class is being rude. When the kids are talking over the teacher. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, so. Uh, we're, we're, we're going through these up here. So if you finish, just send on or something. And we'll, come. <laughs> well, just come by, come by in 10 minutes. It'll be good. Okay. Just trying to find something else I could show you that's... It makes it more fun, you know, instead of tedious and monotonous, like <laughs> that type of thing. See, I was hoping that this here had that thing I could show you because I could go through and bend all the parts on the side and then whip the, the piece around because it sits on the side of the, the slat, the, this armor here, wherever this armor is at, wherever this armor. It sits on the, 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 this, the outside of the, the, the armor, but it's really cool to bend it and put it all together and then, and then once you prime it and paint it, you can't even tell. So it's, it's, it's really neat. Um, now here's one I can do. This will work. It's a smaller part, but it'll work. Hey, okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece right here. And I'm going to bend it because it's got some funny bends in it. But it also has some pretty complex solder joints to solder together. So kind of give you an idea how that and then there's also this little guy right here, this little headlight, I guess is what it is. I did the, one of these at the last class I did to bend it all up, soldered it all together. It was kind of cool. So that little tool that you that you were asking me about here a minute ago. 
think that will work on our little subject right here. So I'm going to fold out this little piece here. I'm going to take this, and I think this is going to work. I'm not 100% sure. This guy, bring him over like this. See, it's not quite lined up yet. Okay. Take this piece of end it up. It's nice and straight. I don't, I don't think that's actually, I don't think this piece right here is actually going to solder to that part at all. It might just be a joint or something. So now we have a, the piece. Put the flux in here. And then that, that one thing I was telling you earlier is when you get, if you heat it, just right in here, right on the solder. And if you pull it along here, you can see the solder just go. Just wicks right through. Yeah, it goes right up the thing. Right it's really cool to watch. I've done it a couple of times. Trusty tweezers and hold my subject. Solder doesn't want to join it. So it seems like I have an extra pair of tweezers here. So now I have the, you can see the, the pedal of solder right there. If I heat it up from the back side, the solder will flow right down the joint. Mm Flow right down the joint. So now that piece is nice and solid. You don't have to worry about it coming apart on you. <laughs> but and oh, your tweezers. Tweezers. And my tweezers again get soldered <laughs> to the, the piece, which I've done that several times actually. No, no, no solid. So, so there's that part. I was just hoping this had all those little pieces that that uh, you could use. Let me see. So anybody have questions, maybe? Ideas, main thoughts? When you're, let's say you start a project, uh, just go on the net and see if Edward or somebody else has another aftermarket. Yeah, I, I, every, every time I, I, I find a subject that I'm interested in, mm -hmm. I go and see what Edward, Aries, and some other companies have available for detail parts. Because yeah. I'm the insane one. 
that Corsair that Mike gave me. I literally ordered the Big Sen set for the Corsair for the Tamiya kit, which actually has the full engine, mm -hmm. the cockpit, and the mm -hmm. wheels. And then I also ordered the exterior set for the F4U Corsair, which is, you know, some of the exterior details and stuff like that. I think that one was for the Trumper kit, if I recall correctly. I'll go through and I'll take that Revell kit and I'll scribe all the panel lines in and I'll go through and do all this stuff to the resin, put it, you know, and just do, and then I don't, I haven't got comfortable enough with doing rivets. I haven't done any rivets. I'm not comfortable enough doing those. You're talking about adding a three-dimensional dot. No, no. What are you talking about? There's a, there's a tool that I've got. It's called, it's called a riveter. It basically, it's kind of a really modified, looks like a gear to me. It's basically you t put a straight edge down and you run it across a straight edge. Uh, and, and it just... Da, 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 it, da. Yeah, and yeah. It, it dots your thing. The best time from what I've seen to use that is after you have your primer on. Because mm -hmm. the plastic, it'll push the plastic and cause the plastic to bow up. But this, the, with the primer, it doesn't do that. It just punches a hole in the primer. Mm -hmm. And then once you wash it, mm -hmm. that kind so of stuff. So it looks like a recessed rivet. Yeah. A flush rivet. Yeah. Uh, so let's see if I can figure out how to get the rest of this goody stuff on here. Yes, Dave, I'm insane. I already knew that. <laughs> <clears throat> That's just the target for IEDs. Yeah, but then it also has this stuff. The RPG armor. This one's kind of crazy. Slot, slot armor? Yep. It looks really cool though when it's all done. This sits out here on the front. It's got this big fence around the whole thing. This piece sits right here on the back door. That's where this piece sits. Well, the Kodakon Broadway always got to strap the Taliban bodies to it. You know, which is a little movie. See, I, I had a really crazy idea with a model for the Striker. Yeah. At the time, I had got the original Striker. I, Are you still I actually, filming? Yes. Yeah. It's okay. I had this really cool idea as I was going to take a, uh, a German uh, 20 millimeter flak, the quad flak, and mount it on top of that thing. Oh, gee. Oh, on that? Did that, uh -huh. did that cool. <laughs> Wait, you should have cut the back down, turned it into no, a deck. No, I, I just do it just like this and just mount it right on top of the, uh, right on top of it. It would rock too much when you shot it. Hmm. Yeah, it's, it's just hypothetical, Dave. Right. You know, you know, just. And then you can just put those little post things that come out and stick down and keep them. Oh, yeah. Like on a 10 ton? Yeah. <laughs> you can take them right off the helmet model. <clears throat> yeah. I wanted to put one of those quad mount 20s on a helmet. So that one, I think the mount is right there. Because the full pattern lines up. Are those for the slat armor or yeah. the gear? No, it's a slat armor. Or this is for the, the secondary armor, which is this stuff. I'll just bolt on it, uh, upgrade. Yeah. And then there's posts right here that stick all the, the slat armor on the outside of it. I think the last time I did it, what I did is I put it up, put the armor actually on the pieces and then I slipped it into the place. That's how I think I did it last time. Instead of trying to do it this way, so it just all lines up properly. So it does. Nice little kit, though. Yeah. Yeah. Looks thin. What's that? The plastic wall thickness for a vehicle that size, it looks thin. Yeah, it's AFD Club that makes it. They're making me use the plastic part, and I don't like that. I like the one for the trumpeter kit better. It's got parts you have to bend. Oh, so. Sounds good. See you in a couple weeks. Yep. Thank you.
Yeah, next week's trees. Making trees? Yeah, from scratch. We need the trees to stick in the slat arm like a camouflage or striker. <laughs> <clears throat> As you just stick it all in one thing and worry about it later. Put all the loose stuff in a big bag. Definitely one way to do that. Yep, exactly. Tuesday. Yep, all finished up, Scott. All right. Rachel, you done? I'm out of the way. You already say thank you and good night? No, nope, I'll let you do that part. All right. Thanks, everybody. What are we doing next week? Next week is Scratch Built Trees by with Mr. Steve Wright. So we will see you guys hopefully in the store next week. And don't forget, 30% off of our what kind of kit today? The Bronco oh. kit. It's Bronco or our. And as always, if you have questions, comments, throw them up on the video. We'll get them over to Dan, and we'll get you some answers. Thanks, everybody.